so that way you can appraise the pearls. So we have the Wand of Invisibility on Max, we have the Rod of Extended Metamagic, and oh man, we go away and we, we lose the hot hand. You can reburn one if you want, it's up to you. You got one left to burn. Now I do explain the hero points, so go into notes if you ever need it on hero points for where I will award those. All right. Let's see. Okay. And apparently I've been cut off, but I rolled twelve. That probably doesn't do it. Nope. Let's see. Get yeah, fantasy grounds just dropped again. Ah, crappy. That's no fun. All right. So we'll have Gale take a shot at it. Let's see. Where's Gale? There he is. He's got, I believe, a praise. Does he? Yep, he does. All right. Yep. All right. So 23. All right. So the first pearl. Let's go over here. Let's see if I can find it and describe what Gale is telling you he sees. Um, nah, it's not the right one. Where is it? There it is over here. Move my books around and I'll get into trouble. All right. So, Max reconnected. I hope we don't drop a lot. I'm not supposed to. I mean, I've. But then again, you never know. It's. It is the internet. <laughs> All right. I so. don't know what's wrong. It's bright and sunny during that cliff. Can't wait in the rain. Yeah. No. Sometimes it's just people, amount of people on using the, the lines. Because not all of them are fiber optic, unfortunately. All right. The first one, um, it glows with a strong transmutation. Uh, it's... It basically, from what Gail takes some time, because again, she's getting all these robots synced up and going. Um, Oincy is. So what he can tell you after about a few minutes of looking at this and appraising it, is it will let you regain a spell that you've already burned. And he says there are common occurrences in his neck of the woods by spellcasters. Um, it is a pearl of power with a third level slot that it can redo. So pearl of power third. So for spellcasters of any sort, doesn't have to be to be any of them. Divine otherwise, this is usable. Does that like happen once per day, or is it like yeah. does that consume the item? No, I, let's see. We'll, we'll look at it and see. I don't know if it'll consume the item, so let me go through the description and double check it. Um, once per day, or by command, the Pearl of Power enables the possessor to recall one spell that they have prepared, and then cast that spell. Uh, the spell must be of a particular level, depending on the pearl. Different pearls. Uh, exist for recalling one spell per day, first through ninth, and some can recall two spells, but they're more, they're definitely higher value. This one probably values about 4,500 gold pieces. So, once you guys are available to third level spells, this one will be pretty valuable. All right, let's see if he can look at the other one. And he goes, hmm, let me see what I can tell you about this one. And, let's see, does it roll? No, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> mm. There we go. He says, the second one I can't tell you much about. Says it is magical, and he says I am able to discern a little bit about it, but he says not really much. 
<laughs> he says it has abjuration and transmutation. Nice job, Nell. All right. After looking at it, I'm taking, again, another four or five minutes, you gain the idea that this is... Um, if it is held to your breast while the possessor attempts actions related to the pearl's powers, she understands and is able to employ them. The pearl enables the possessor to breathe in water as if it were fresh, clean air. You can swim at the speed of 60 feet and cast spells and act underwater without hindrance. And this is what it is called. And once you mention it to Gil, he goes, oh, those are invaluable for land dwellers. He says, they were created by our underwater people to allow you to act as if you were one of us. So those are the two pearls that you found in that one room. All right. So that was in um, in that strong box. Glad I looked back because you guys would have not gotten those items and that would have sucked. Yeah. <laughs> um, in C9, you guys got the glove. Remember the glove that allows you to tinker around. It is the glove of the engineer. Or engineer's work gloves. They're blue colored. And an any tra our traveler's any tool. So blue engineer's work gloves. These are the two that you got from that one room C9. And I think that'll catch up all the items other than the ones you got from the leader, the bad guy leader. Rick, can you kick me so that I can rejoin, please? Ah, sure. Let's see. Where are you? Uh, I'm not seeing you in the deal. Lovely. So, all right, let me do this. I can make this real easy. Hang on to your hats, everybody. If you got any saving to do, do it now. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on to your butts. Here we go. I'll I'm give going you five back. Minutes or I shut it off. And she will shut it off too, by God. Don't you make mom mad. Five minutes. <laughs> Kim is quite serious. Do not tick off the mommy. So while we're waiting and reloading, did you guys see those figurines <laughs> from Pops? Yeah, I saw your pick of that. That friggin' Ursula is huge. I have never... It, it is bigger than the TARDISes. It's bigger than the things out of Fallout, the robots. This thing is friggin' huge. That's what I'm thinking. It was like 30 some odd dollars. I'm like, whoa. 32 with, tax. 32 with tax. Which is not as much as I thought it would be. And then, of course, we got the Witch King and the Fell Beast. The Witch King of Angmar. Uh, Alright, so we're coming back up again. But yeah, those are some nice pickups that she got recently. I mean, I, I swear they have a lot of exclusives. At GameStop and some of the other places, if you ever collect those kind of things. Those are exclusive, they were just pre-orders. Yeah, those are just pre-orders. But there are some exclusive ones, too. Like, Michael's had an unpainted Mickey that you can paint. Kind of weird stuff. All right. So while we're loading, I addressed you how was Gen Con. Give us a snapshot. Um, Gen Con is pretty amazing if you're into tabletop gaming, board mm -hmm. games, and all of that stuff. Um, I think the thing that was um, really cool was definitely the vendor room. Like, so much 
was going on just in the vendor room. Mm. Um, so tons of um, uh, tons of really cool new board games. Like if you, they were coming out with like uh, really cool uh, kid friendly ones that were like mm -hmm. way cooler than the Milton Bradley ones that I grew up with. Um, <laughs> I got some uh, cool D and D stuff. I got um, some metal dice. I got some nice. stuff from Wormwood and Elderwood Academy. That was dope. Um, next year I want to go back and mm -hmm. uh, the miniature is really cool like the terrain and all that stuff that was mm -hmm. like really crazy cool and there was a lot of people that had the table set up that had the, the like that had like little like terrain sets up like Hero Forge was there and that was what they had going on with the new lava sets was really yeah. cool um, Steve Perkhorny Pathfinder yeah did you see how much that's worth, though? I, I kick-started that thing. I'm getting some little pieces for, like, $59 that are painted. The whole wow. f The whole first level of hell is, like, 179 And then you go to the second level, and it's, like, 598 painted. Then we're to 1300 wow. for the third level. I'm like, good God. I can't afford these things. That's like... Especially if they're painted, yeah. And some of them get up to $3,500. I'm like, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> like my... Thank the guy who play. I went with, his entire basement, like he has like... He has so much terrain, he can fill up like three or four Ikea shelves. Wow. Like big, decent sized shelves um, with bins of terrain and stuff <sighs> like that. Um... That's just so unreal. if you if you DM, apparently you can get like a discounted or a free ticket. So I was thinking about DMing some sessions next year yeah. and uh, save the money. Just kind of yeah, but also too just kind of experiencing like some new players and new ideas mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah, it's well, I've had a f ton of people say come, and I'm like. How I gotta take the time away from family and all this stuff and how am I yeah, gonna they do can it? Come. I know, but the question is, when does Minsky melt down? Because <laughs> at some point she's gonna, and it, it'd be yeah, fun. Yeah, well, if you can, if you can get in a, a hotel room connected to the convention convention yeah. center, then you know she can hopefully you know go back to the room. We did that with um, the Acon show down in. Uh, in uh, uh, Fort Worth, or actually it was in Dallas, and we were able to do that, and it helped. And plus, they yeah. do have rooms, I guess, for kids that you can take them to that they can decompress and play with other yeah, kids. Yeah, they did. They did. But yeah, just the, the sheer amount of people, I looked at that and went, wow. <laughs> like, I think it was another record-breaking year, and I was like, holy crap. Yeah. Like, I can believe it. Well, there's just so many people that went, and, and I, you know... I was among the minority that didn't. Holy crap. Who rolled all those fours? <laughs> well, you killed them now, Sil. Whatever was there is dead. <laughs> that was funny. Josh rolled a bunch of fours. Got 99 points. Well, that's cool. I'm glad you got to go. I... Yeah, me too. It was a really good experience. That's what I hear from anybody that went... You know, so I guess every one of us will have to go sometime if we can. Uh, there we go. All right. Those are can be fun too. They there can be just as fun the little ones. In fact, there's sometimes less pressure. <laughs> you can get around a little easier, and especially if the right companies come. Yay. All right, so, um, Oinsy says whenever you're ready, we're ready to go with you. And if there's anything, she goes, I will try to help what I can, but I don't know where every hidden location is. Again, the priests. How many levels are there down below it? She goes, there, I believe, are two. There's the one where the stairs go down. She goes, that level drops about 30 feet down to the next level of the temple. 
And then she goes, there is a high priest's level that is even farther down. She goes, the rooms are quite sizable when you get down to the first lower level. Uh, but she goes, I don't know all of what they did in the lowest level. She goes, my priest was mostly up on the mountain observing stars. So Which she, room is it that uh, is C4? Um, C4, she goes, oh, oh, oh. She goes, you mean the one that's way over just as you come in to the left? Yes, she, I found a spirit in there, so I didn't investigate the room. I'm wondering if it's someone that might be left over from this place that might still be haunting it as a matter as in some fashion or another. Either way, I didn't. I was just there by myself, so I uh, did not investigate the room. She says that is our San Christi room. And that is where some of the priests went for their prayers and their, and their time. She goes, the San Christi room is an interesting room. She goes, we stored a lot of things in, in the, uh, the boxes that you probably saw around the room, the metal boxes. She goes, it was used a lot for storage and um, other valuables that were here. She goes, that would be what would be considered the valuable room um, for the temple itself. She says, you're welcome to go there. I'll go with you. With our guardians. So it's up to you guys. She goes... We can always come back to it afterwards, too, as well. She goes, as long as you didn't see necessarily anything aggressive that was attacking you. She goes, yes, I would like that room cleared out for future usage. But she says it's not something that has to be done now. He goes, true. She goes, true, and, and I'm more than happy to go with you and see what we can do to find out what is there. She goes, I cannot guarantee what valuables were there at the time. Again, this was so many years ago, but there were some visiting delegates that were here at the time. Uh, let's see, Char would like to ask her when she gets a chance if she might know. <sighs> she goes, I do not. All I could think is maybe that whoever came and took them might have them in the underwater levels, which would be the lower levels. So most likely they would be somewhere down below. She goes, my guess is, is that they used something to allow them to breathe water. We have a lot of those things now. Yeah, including the mucus, which was the other thing you guys had. The mucus from the abolith that allows you to. So, um, she says the you must be careful because there were some uh, powering devices at the lower levels. So I do not know if they're still functional underwater. But she goes, as you know, salt water conducts lightning and other types of energy very well. She goes, I am at your service. Markale's all for, you know, making sure that we clear this place out mostly for her her uh, her own ends. <laughs> in the, in the future to turn this place into some kind of uh what were the glowy orbs? What were those? Oh, she says those are powering devices. The priests used lightning and other energy to power um some of my kindred so that we did not have to have the wind-up levers. All we have to do is plug ourselves into, and she shows you on the walls of the cog, there's some tines that come out. She goes, if those go into the back of the soldiers or the workers, that would be as if you wound them up with the key. 
So you have an option either way to charge them or to wind them up. She goes, the charging, of course, lasts longer than the winding. Um, she goes, I don't know. That's a very... Um, yeah, clearly suitable as a children's playhouse. Oh, my God. Um, she goes, I do not know, Shara, if there are ways to clear those levels of flooding. She goes, maybe we can improvise that with the workers once we have cleared the temple itself. There may be ways. But she goes, unfortunately, the earthquake has dropped this portion of the temple to the water level. She goes, at, at one time, the surrounding island and your island and all the others were one solid landmass. The only reason they're islands is because of the earthquakes and the flooding of the seawaters into these areas. Otherwise, she says, we were one large continent and this was part of one of the, con the continental countries that were in the Aslanti Empire. Uh, what was the description of the C4 room? What was that room supposed to be? Oh, the C4, the San Cristi. So, but what was the, was that, what's that room used for? Storage, mostly. She goes, at one okay, time storage. it used to be uh, a side room. A San Cristi, she goes, in temples are often used as side rooms to store guests' uh, items of value so that they are not taken and then they can be returned upon retrieval uh things like weapons yeah yep yeah. <laughs> um, I, mean, I don't know who that ghost is but they're they're stopping progress <laughs> <laughs> so there there goes sill so are you guys all going to follow sill back over that way oh definitely all right so let's was, get everybody yeah, i was assuming we were all going that way anyway so i just put my chip over there before before Mark Hale goes running off, Aurora needs a translator. Uh, Aurora asks about the blacksmith room and what the oh, forge was specifically used for. You, you don't need you don't need a translator. The the staying around your common tongue. Oh, that's right. She's long enough. Now. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So there's Max. Shara, are you going to go up ahead, or <laughs> or yeah? I would kind of put it in an order you want to be based on Sil's description. Shara making a guess to what the shadowy being is. No, I mean, you think it's probably some sort of a a incorporeal undead of some sort, maybe? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, the damn Somebody fears feeling house. loved. <laughs> yeah, so would love to help with this, but she has no way to actually deal damage to it. So. All right. So, Shara, place yourself. You have a bad feeling. <laughs> Of course. It come up and give you big old hugs. It's that friendly. <laughs> All right. Okay. So again, it's really silent except for the lapping of the water. Do for me Aurora, um, Nell, and Sill, and of course Pelish a perception check for just the general area. That's your up up-to-date perception uh, oh you yeah yeah you, you sure you want to stay with that one <laughs> you guys have some re-rolls i suppose i could use my final re-roll on that all but. right it's up to you all right better you see some movement down towards the steps you don't know what it is but you see some movement Hmm. It's not too can far away. Gail, so, so is it just Gail? Can Gail and Markel see? Um, yeah, I believe Gail has dark vision on well, him. So we'll go and investigate. As still also has dark vision. Yep, uh, dark vision. Yeah, Let's I've go got dark abilities. vision as well. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, speaking of all that talk about treasure we had before, how many of those um, continual flame whatevers did, did I take? Oh, I can just throw that into the pile. Probably f five of them. Sure. Okay. So if someone wants to make a note of that, uh, it's, you can go into the pile for cells later. All right. Anyway, she'll go in and she'll investigate the movement in the water. 
All right, so let's do that. Let's go to... Huh. All right, so as you go down that way, you see movement as it submerges again. But you can try to percept into the water. It is murky. Um, hmm. I guess I'll try percepting into the water first. All right. You can see some fishy friends. There are about four of them in the water. Looking, Lord. looking up at you with big old ivy balls. See, so now situations like guys. this where I was carrying around a bottle of uh, bleach. <laughs> Dead fish. <laughs> that would be a good idea. Fishy yeah. friends floating upside down. Yeah, I once found a uh, a, a small pool of uh, still water that had. Um, these little things swimming around in it that was clearly probably like uh, uh, mosquitoes in their larva stage or whatever, and that's exactly mm -hmm. what it is. <laughs> Taking care of business. It's yeah. the best way to do it. And that way then you don't have to worry about them. All right. All right, well, she doesn't feel she should do the work for them and get into the water to fight them, so she'll just draw them out uh, with one of her javelins. All right. And by drawing about, I mean she'll just throw it in at him. Right yeah, she'll kill one. Yeah, she'll go right in there. Well, yeah. All right. So let's go into initiative because they yeah, did see him. It's not a surprise necessarily. All right. Let's get Palish over there. So, all right. Let me get these guys into here. Do do do. Let's see. Where are they? So, the NPCs. Uh, Pellish is going to be uh, at the end. It's not always a disadvantage to go last. No, <laughs> no, not always. All right. Also, so you're going to come in at the last minute and save the day. Yeah. Right, so, real quick, I'm going to shrink this so I can get all these guys on here. All right, one, two. Four. I'll do Gale's roll here, so we got Gale's initiative. All right, there's the initiative. Yeah, sucks. Always. All right, so these guys get what on theirs? We get plus three. All right, so put that in there. Let's see how they do. There is a thirteen. Okay, put him on thirteen. Then this one goes on seven. That's horrific for them. Good for you guys. All right. And that's a 16 for that one. All right. And then the last one. That would be a 14. Everyone's moving. All right, so we got everybody. What was so? What was your initiative? Your initiative was fourteen. All right, Felix. What was your initiative? It was an eight. Eight. All right, I got everybody there. So now all I have to do is do this, get rid of that, pull that back up, and there we go. Okay, so then we're at that. All right, so the first one that gets to go is aurora aurora you 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 could see sill going down all the way because you got dark vision too don't you that's a damn fear yep yeah you can <laughs> you can see that she is trying to she's got her she gets out her javelin and is looking like she's raising it to strike something in the stairwell in the water from that distance it's like she's fishing So what? She is, technically, she is fishing. Yes, you are. <laughs> All right. Spear fishing. Spear fishing. Got to catch me some fishies. Have them on the Barbie. These aren't the kind of fish you can eat, so who cares? 
But yeah, you still can eat about anything. <laughs> Except she probably will I, disdain human flesh, but I don't know. I was going to say, I draw the line at eating sentient. <laughs> Sil, do you, do you draw the line at eating sentient things? Um, uh, well, yeah, I mean, she really doesn't eat as much as you're making it out to be. <laughs> but, well, I mean, she probably doesn't eat much more than uh, kind of a... Because she has so much experience just kind of being out in the wild on her own and using her survival skills, she does eat, like, a lot of, like, wild things, but not, like... Uh, not like anything more than like Tarzan or someone like that's been out in the wild and a little yeah. bit of feral would eat. <laughs> Shara, quarter stick of dynamite and boom. <laughs> Fishing the old fashioned way. Just do it, do it that way. Throw a stick of dynamite in there and boom, your fish come to the surface. That's funny. All right. Uh, so. Were we told about this room to the north, C4? Yeah, you remember Sil did the report from the San Cristi and kind of told you that he saw the I said, I, I said what I saw in the yeah. I said what I saw in the room, and I said what was what I saw in the room. <laughs> yeah, and then I and then uh, what's her face? Um, Oinsi, she explained to us like what that room really was. Yep. So there's a there's a dead guy holding our money hostage. <laughs> I, I, I love um, Max's <laughs> response. <laughs> Depth charge. Oh my god. Are you sure you don't mean torpedo? <laughs> no. You have to launch a torpedo. And it, has to, it has to run long enough to arm. Oh. Uh, let's do the clockwork. Hang on here. Clockwork. Soldiers. Um, there we go, Clockwork Soldier. There's one and two. Good stuff. All right, so I got to roll for Oinsy's little initiative here. All right, she's got this. Oinsy's 16, which is where she is, and then the two Clockworks. Hang on here. All right. Clink and clank the soldier twins. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, clink and clank. They don't really. I think. Have I think you mean clink, clank, and clunk. Yes, clink, clank, and clunk. Um, actually, one of those goes before you, just slightly, because I forgot they were there. All right. Let's see. One of those is going to go five, ten. 15, 20, 25, 30. He's over here. Clank, 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 clank. Kaja and Chris. The Pliskiva twins. Yeah, dead guy holding Markel's money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That poor money. It's probably so terrified. It is. It's being held in an improper fashion. It must be freed. Free. <laughs> Instead of free so, willy, free the money. Rick, look, looking into the room to the north, what can I see with the dark vision? Maybe? There is a, what looks to be, and it's moving around, it's just a very see-through figure that is in there. Okay. It, it... Does it, does it seem to react to me being at the doorway at all? No, it does not seem like it is sentient oh, okay. like most would be. You can make a knowledge religion check to see if you can better, because you've been trained in these kind of things. It needs a good mud facial. <laughs> oh, my God. Do you have any rerolls? You do. I think you have one reroll left, if I remember correctly. No, but I've got hero points that I could use. Yeah, you could. Yeah, that's I'm true. I'm going to use a hero point for this purpose because I definitely need to. <sighs> yeah, the robots. I got your. Oh, oh my lord! You just <laughs> you can't win. You don't know. It it it's baffling you that it's not coming at you. It... You do have another hero point. <laughs> keep going. Yes, you do. I think we. Last well, time we got any, we got two of 
Well, I listed the hero points under notes, so if you want to see how they can be used now, there are two. The one that has the shorter one is for 2E. Ignore it. The other one that I say is the 1E one, open it and look, and that'll have all the... That's the one thing they did in dumbing down hero points, which it's kind of nice in some ways and kind of not. All right, I'm gonna entrust that the group plus Zell are gonna be able to handle the water creatures, <laughs> and I am gonna go ahead and move into the room. All right, go ahead and move yourself in five, then, if you want. Thirty. Oh wait, twenty-five. So twenty-five there. All right, moving into the San Christi. All right, and. With that, I'm going to use, for the first time, uh, uh, do I want to use it? Do I want to use it? I'm going to use Detect Undead. Okay. I mean, I know, I know it's undead, but the idea is the longer I can potentially get additional information. Yes. Go ahead and, let's see, look here at something real quick while you're doing that. 60 foot cone shaped concentration up to one minute per level no spell resistance there's no it's not an attack it's just it happens or it doesn't and I just get the presence or absence of undead auras which obviously there's an undead aura ahead of her hmm. I, I thought we talked about this, guys. We wanted to set off the C4 by the water so that they would all blow <laughs> up, right? That was the goal? Yeah, 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 yeah. It kind of does. Let's see. What does it do? First round, a presence of the... So the first round, there is definitely a presence there, a necromatic presence. Mm -hmm. um, mm, okay. All right. So that begins that one. All right. So now we are from Aurora to the pseudo dragon Pelish. She goes, "What would you like me to do, Mistress?" Yeah, I see. It looks like second edition made hero points more like uh, action points. From yes, they Eberron did. And, and that's something I'll tell you going into two E. I will not do. I think it is a, 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 it is a detriment more than a help. And I get why they did them. It made them more simplified. But I, I like the diversity of a hero point. Because maybe you don't want to use it for those two actions. Maybe you want to go in a different order. Like, you can burn a hero point to go in a different order. So, right now, if one of you wants to go at 25 initiative, you can burn that hero point to go sooner. You don't stay there, but you can do it for this particular round to gain you an advantage over a creature. Hey, Rick, was that a lingering aura, or was that not a lingering aura? It is a lingering aura of sorts. That answers that question. Perfect. So it's weak. It's weaker than a than like a faint undead aura would be. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Well, in a sense, it is. It it it's different. It's not necessarily weaker. It's just different. Okay. Than your standard one. All right. So let's yeah, see. Did you read that part? The lingering aura part from the spell itself. Or from yeah. The, uh, yeah, yeah, I did. And and as to what kind of undead this is, it's it's. Sure, sure. I'm not trying to get the exact type of undead. I'm trying to find there, out if it let's was just say there's or not. there's interpolation. No, it was not recently. This is there's something. The I'm yes, for. no. Okay. There's it, nothing recent. I got it. Yeah. All right. So, um, ba 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 bum. Miss Laura, what do you want to do with Pelish? She is offered. <laughs> okay. Okay. Perfect. So she'll, she'll stay right near you then. All right. Oinsy. Oinsy's going to go 5, 10, 20, 25, 30. Oinsy is moving down that way now. You notice she has no weapon necessarily in hand right now. Though she does have a weapon on her, 
that is a like a mace like weapon looks like maybe a light mace on her all right so now we go to these guys all right so it's going to come closer to you and you see this long spear coming out of the water at you all right let's see long spear will a 23 hit you uh 23 is my armor class Ooh, right on all right so that is there and then this she does 12 points golly moses max damage that thing does to you out of the water when i when i launch we never resolved my uh my own attack on there when i arrived you wouldn't it's it's even initiative to you guys because they're in the water okay. looking up at you if you had surprised them it's different but they're looking straight up at you with with their and they've got dark vision too so they're kind of looking straight out the right. water at you fair enough yeah if you'd had surprise now i guess we could have done a perception versus a sneak which we didn't do but next time we'll do that because that 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 would tell if you were able to hide in the shadows or whatever from them and fool them. So we'll do that next time. We didn't do that, unfortunately. All right. So Mark Hale, it is your turn. All right. Um. So. Hmm. Who do I want to help? Aurora or the uh, I better help Sill cuz you know <laughs> yeah four of them want a Sill <laughs> All right so I will move here and use a as a free action mm -hmm. I will implant a mesmerist trick on her of a uh, false flanker Yep so basically it sees another thing and she gets the flanking bonus when she hits. Beautiful. Exactly. So and I'm going to... I will put... Hang on here. Let me do this. Let's just get a general token. Of, we'll do this one here. All right. So sill this. The sill number two is not you, but it would be where it appears to flank that one. That'll be, that'll okay. be the false flanker. And I'm going to do color spray on the one immediately in front of her. Oh, nice. All right. So we'll save DC 15. Yay. We'll save. Let's see if it's got a decent will save. Uh, where is it? Eh, it's a five. It's not horrible, but it's not great either. Eh, it gets an 18. So what do you do? Anything at uh, all? No, it just negates. Ah, bummer. That would have been a nice yep. little stunning maneuver. Yeah, ah. especially for her. So, all right, that is me. Good job. Okay, so let's go to the clockwork, the second one. Oops, hang on here. Uh, don't do that. All right, so clockwork number two. Coming from there. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. 60. All right. It's moving up quickly. That one's kind of almost at a run going chunk, clank, 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 clank. <laughs> Not making it good for being stealthy, but it's doing its job. I like how uh, Aurora uh, still has effect stable on her that we have to specify that. <laughs> uh, you know. All right. So, it is your turn, Sil. You can go. You can try to fire back at the one that hits you with the spear. Yeah, she will. Uh, since it moved right directly in front of her, she might uh, start a flurry at it. Ooh. <laughs> so. Mm, that, that. That should be a hit. No problem. Let's see. Let's do this. All right, so it's 27. To, yeah, both of those are easy hits. All right. 
Dang. You want to re-roll the one? Burn your... I already used all my re-rolls. Oh, crap. That's right. You did. All right. So the one roll again for me to see if you confirm on that one. Mm, no. Good. Whew. All right. So you hit three times. Turn the fish the fish into fish sticks. That's going to leave a mark. <laughs> yeah. Ow, that hurts. All right. Once, twice. 14 so far. Also adds 1d6 due to my, uh, one of my feats. And, um... 15 and 5. 8. Okay, so that's 8 more. So that'd be... 15, 23 points. Yeah, damage. nice job. Out of the water. <laughs> Just trying to breathe. After you flurried the heck out of it. Alright. Shara. Now, Shara, you can try an acrobatics to get across that ten feet. In other words, you're on the side of that fountain, jumping to the other side and landing. And then you can do the rest of yours and move as a second action. It would get you over that fountain. And you got real rolls to burn, so, you know, it's not like if you miss, you can't re-roll it. it. It'll be a DC 18 to hit the other side without slipping because of the water that's going out on the one side. It's kind of a moist, wet area on those sides, but you can do it. All right, so I'd burn a re-roll if I were you. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll go flying into the middle of the fountain. Worse than that, you would flash Felix. Yeah, and Felix would have to chuckle at some point. All right, you clear it. You literally jump from one end, like a, high, a long jump to the other, land on the solid, unwet side of it. And then now you can do your normal move. She just runs. She's just literally standing long jump over. <laughs> so, Felix, you don't get wet this time. Yay. <laughs> Yay. All right, go ahead and uh, move her where you want to on there, Akisha, on the other side. You get six, six of them, six of them. Yeah, well, that's because you bounce on the dang beds all the time. <laughs> You're ready to long jump at that point. <laughs> you got those muscles perfected for running and jumping. All right. So now the other scummy. He is swimming this way and coming out 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. All right. So that one's there. The next one is going 5, 10, 15, 20, 5. All right. There you go. So those two are staying on you, Sill, and then the other ones are coming out. Nell, you see them coming out and slopping their little fish legs and running as quickly as possible towards Markeo, Oinsi, and the other clockwork. Turn towards where Aurora. Okay. Since that, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So back in Aurora. I love it. Okay. Alrighty. Let's see, that takes us to Felix. Felix, you have the water in front of you. You can try to cat jump it using an acrobatics. 
Or you can just no. gent, gently, slowly walk through it if you. I'm just. All right, so move at half speed through it. Otherwise, you'll have to take a reflex save to stay up. Oh, I'll do a reflex save. All right. Do a reflex. You got this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you did get the message through that you were going to cover Aurora's back and turn that way. No problem. I thought I'd mention it or said something on that. That Yeah, fine. Nothing, with, nothing wrong with that. Are you in my... Oh, okay. You're good. Where is my report? Oh, there it is. Dun -dun. And just click the little die thing by it and it'll roll it for you. And do all the Oh, adding. we'll have to re-roll that. <laughs> okay. So we're burning a re-roll. I think a six is bad. Yeah, six is real is bad. Sixteen good. Sixteen is good. You're fine right. moving through that then. Alright. So you got one re-roll left. Alright. And oh I can see the buggers around the corner I think. Mm -hmm. I, I I appear to be kicked off of my roll function. Yeah, I got kicked off too. Yep. So I think this is time number five or six. I'm sorry guys. I mean I probably should have reset my connection down on this end. Because it seems like we have no problems when I do that for the internet. Well, it seems to be some people at a time and not others, so it might yeah. just be somewhere in the middle uh, between where everyone's getting connected rather than you specifically. Yeah. I don't know, because some of the last times we tried to do that, it just uh, might help for a bit, and then it just goes away. Then it goes away, yeah. All right, so you can do your magic what? missile, or you can do whatever you want to do, because you just did a standard move. Yep, the reflex oh, magic missile. All righty. I think there are issues across that, yeah, it could be. I mean, in some cases, if we're going through states that have storms or anything like that, you know, I don't know where we're being bounced and pinged all over the place for connections. Indiana has storms going on right now. Okay. Yeah. I, Big part of Indiana. Said, she said... All right, I'll have to do, do it by hand, so... Kim was saying the main part of Indiana's having problems right now, and that would affect you guys coming in, unless yeah. you guys are coming through Kentucky to get up to me. All right. You got uh, five. I did five damage. All right, five damage, and that's to the one at the that's coming closest to Marqueo. I take it. Yeah. All right, five. It is. He hit him, and he goes. Whoa. And says something. That's the sound I hear in Hearthstone sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's the uh, Murloc sound effect. Yep. <laughs> and that's what it says, but two of you understand. <laughs> it is in Auckland. <clears throat> All right. So we got Chunk. Chunk, Chunk, Chunk. Oh, okay, these are. Five foot X's, right? Yes, they are five foot. That means I can cruise on up to there, and I'm going to uh, loft a. What do you call these pointy things? <laughs> the uh, spear. Trident. Trident. <laughs> the pointy, the little prong thing. Yeah, I'm gonna introduce one of these guys. To it. Actually, hmm. No, not the trident. I'm gonna use the javelin because the trident is uh, one of a kind. So, there nice. we go. Jeff. All right. Nice. Yeah. You have introduced him. <laughs> Do your damage. And there's some pain. Yeah, seven points of pain. He, he now knows you guys are there. <laughs> there's no doubt in his mind that the, the air breathers are alive. All right. So, Gale. Let's see what Gale does. Gale goes 5, 10, 15, 20. So he's going to go out right up behind them and then go through here and then let loose with his aquatic crossbow. All right, where is he? Let's see, Gale. There he is. And Gale firing a crossbow.
And he misses horrifically. I think. Yeah, 12. 12 does not hit. So Gale with a crossbow, not so good of a shot. All right, and then the last one is coming up on 5, 10, but the flanker sticks with this one there. All right, so that one's coming at you. All right. And that's the plus on there. Yeah, it's plus 8. All right. Trying to hit Sill. And a 23. It gets you again. They just got your number today. Nine. Getting lucky. So Sill's now taking 21, but still not dead. But will need help at some point. All right. Top of the order. Here we go. How injured is the one that I flurried uh, earlier? Pretty injured. Looks pretty beaten up. Oops, put Gale back. Go back. Sorry, just gotta move that there. Yeah, definitely been injured. Alright, so the clockwork soldier. One, two, three, four. Going up to this one and attacking. It gets a plus 18 to hit. Actually, it doesn't even be that close. It can be right there. Holy frick. Yeah, it's a halberd. <laughs> Pole arms, gotta love them. Plus 18 to hit. Sweet oh, mother of cheese. yeah, and that's just for the first hit. So it gets up to two attacks. And that's a 34, so that's a hit. And then the second one is, oops, not 18, it is plus 13. So hits twice. All right, so huh, you're going to love the damage. You're going to be thankful you didn't ever have to fight these guys. I'm just telling you. You're welcome. It does a total, and it, and it didn't add the plus 28, of 44 points of damage impaling the fish stick. The fish stick is gone. <laughs> it is negative 29 hit points. So, you have gotten rid of one of the fish sticks. Fish puree. <laughs> As I said, these clockwork soldiers, if you guys would have ticked them off and went and messed with them, they're a pain in the butt. But on your side, they're a whole lot better. So the fish stick is gone. It has been sliced by the axe on the pole arm, and it is in half on the floor. It has indeed died. It has ceased to be. It is no longer among the living. Which, Syl probably hears the swack, swack, foom, <laughs> behind her. Knowing that she's going to have some help soon. We might have more fish sticks before the night's over. All right, Aurora, you're in the room. Uh, well, I've still got the undead, detect undead going. Okay, do me a favor. Roll me a will check. Yeah, I was wondering if this was going to... Okay, where... There it is. Oh, God. Oh, okay, I have another hero you card have, left. It's you, better be used for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whoa! Oh. Nope. So you are so enamored by what you see in that metal box up there in front of you that you're going to go check it out. There looks to be something in there of worth for you as you go and start rummaging. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Why is it out of combat I can roll fine, but once we hit combat, my rolls are just like, nope, nope, never going to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three or higher. I try to creature it. <laughs> Uh, which metal box? There's a few metal boxes. In the, 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 the one that's in front of you in easiest view, it looks to be a really, really, really nice item in there. Let's see. What do you find? And you feel just a horrible... You have a horrible feeling coming over you. Let's see. All right. So it's one of those. 
Okay, so it is a... <laughs> well, hello, honey. How are you? Good. That's good. <laughs> There's the grin at me being silly over here as a GM. Uh, no, it's not under armor. It's under weapons. Where is it? Weapon, weapon. Nothing like a good weapon, right? All right. So, the weapon is... Yeah, you just see a shiny-looking longsword staring up out of you with a nice palm on it. And you want to pick it up. You do. Yes, I do. I will pick it up. Ooh, it just, it feels right in your hand. It does. <laughs> yeah, Felix. <laughs> I don't know why. I want the long sword. No, I have no way. Right. We have you no can't will. see it. You're out of the room. I said it always feels right. It doesn't no. matter. I can detect shiny no matter what. Shiny. Yes, Felix just has that shiny <laughs> alert. Shiny alert. And then, and then you turn towards Shara and say, It's mine. Oh, this is a sword of Markale. Got it. <laughs> totally got it. Wait, 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 wait. Question. How good looking is a sword? But, but you, <laughs> when it says it's... Good looking as you, but not as good looking as me. <laughs> All right. So let's uh -huh. do this. Uh-huh. Watch it, cat. I got a spray bottle with your Where's name on 20? it. And there's... And yet, there are only two people that understand it's mine. Felix, you're going, wait a minute. I didn't know Aurora can speak as Lanty. And now you're kind of feeling the same way. Wait, wait what? She didn't tell me she speaks as Lanty. Actually, they would probably remember that when uh, Oinsi was speaking as Lanty, Aurora was confused the entire time. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So it's everybody's kind of going, what? So it's one of those what moments. All right. We are now to Daddy Dying as Kim works on my shoulder with her elbow. <laughs> um, Pelish is like, Mistress, is there something you need of me? It sounds like Aurora is not well. <laughs> nice. Still get some back. How much? Hey, at least we have a removed curse scroll. So how much does she get back? What level are you? Fourth? Fifth? Yeah, it's it's six plus four, so ten. Ten points. Yay! Sill's only down 11. Sill's feeling much better. Rick, does the Detect Undead still remain, or did that concentration no, break? No, that concentration is gone. I figured. I thought I'd ask. Though. You feel like you've never felt before. It is just... You have always been that person that went and defended the party and did what was right and those kind of things. You want to kill Shara. You do. You want to kill her deader than a doornail. In fact, you want to kill everybody in your party deader than a doornail because they don't deserve this treasure. They don't. Only you deserve what's in the sand, Christy. Excellent. You guys can see that the shade is right behind Aurora. Don't don't worry, guys. Aurora touching, rolls for shit. Touching. Good. Touching <laughs> her. Really yes. Good. Yeah, uh, this is usually when the uh, table turn as far as your rolls like you yours go. Right. Oh, no, I'm well aware. Yeah. This is not my first rodeo. So, so, so Shara, make a, make a roll. What you have... Just do me a perception or, or a sense motive if you have either one. Perception, I know you have. <laughs> this is where you get the knockout arrows and start pummeling <laughs> your poor party member <laughs> with pummel shots. 
Oh, someone's a green arrow around here. Ooh la la. Yeah, right? <laughs> this is not Aurora at all. And you don't see anything weird about the item. The shadow is what worries you. Because the shadow is literally touching the back of her head as she's screaming this murderous stuff out in his lanty. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> um, Oinsy. All right, so Oinsy is going up towards this one. One, two, three, four. She is going to swack the scum. All right, she gets nine, actually ten. And then ten to hit. Oh, nice, Oinsy. That's not good. It's been too long since you've been out of battle. But, than usual. but fortunately, yeah, she doesn't fumble the weapon of any sort. All right. Yay. Mark Hale. Mark Hale, you can absolutely hear the Aslanti language behind you screaming. In, it's, it's definitely Aurora's voice, and it sounds like she is screaming violent, bloody murder. And you hear Shara's name come up. That's all you can hear. You know something is wrong. Spidey sense going off. Um, I will... Hold on, let me check. Okay. Um, I think I can do this, but I'm just double checking. So is, is, is she under a condition? You think so. Something is definitely running her because oh, you know well, her fantastic. You know her well enough. This this is not her. All right, I go up here and I roll my eyes and I go knock it off and I uh, use my mask misery um, to delay nice. Um, oh, um, dang it, Rick. I should have I should have had a plus 2 to that save. Yeah, it's a affecting effect. I forgot about the undead. That's all right. But what that yeah. what would that have given your roll? Uh, fourteen. Still nope. probably not enough. Seventeen. It, seventeen or better. Remember it's there. Yep, seventeen or better. That's good though. All right. So with this, um, okay, she can she any effects that are affecting her, she can temporarily ignore for one d four rounds. Good. That will be helpful. Definitely. All right, so All right, roll so, four-sided dice for however many rounds. So for two rounds, she no longer has the effect, but afterwards she succumbs to it completely. Okay, so for right now, Aurora, you come back into your mind. It's like this clouding rage. You, you just felt like everything in this room should be yours. Every coin, down to the last coin. And all, and then you see behind you is the shadow with its head, its its spectral hands grasping the back of your head, like it is channeling its own into you. It is a miasma, nasty, just you. You, you have never felt such greed in your life. It is, and Markael is staring into your eyes, and you can, you can kind of sense that her will is pressing against <laughs> this thing, mm -hmm. but she can only do it for so long. But she's very irritated that someone's trying to headhunt one of her employees. <laughs> That's just bad, bad, bad juju. <laughs> it's bad business. One, two, three, five, six, and then it has reach. Beautiful. So it, the Clockwork Soldier is bringing down that halberd on top of the scum twice at the side you to the left. left. That's, That's the one, one I think you've, you've hit, hit before, before, too. So, let's, let's do the plus 18 first. first. All right. And, and that, that is a, a wow. Okay, okay, so now we get to roll to see if it's a critical. Yay, yay, yay. 
And it is. It will have a very splitting headache. Let's see. It's slashing. Surprise opening. Double damage and one free attack against the target with a negative five penalty. All right. So this is plus 14. And then, let's see. Actually, we take the 14 times. Oh, God. This is going to be devastating. Devastating. Where's the ten-sided die? It's around here somewhere. Hello, where'd my ten go? Did I roll it up there and it just got stuck? Oh, stop! I don't want one million chunks. Just looking for the well, ten. Well, we want a million chunks. Yeah, I know, right? An army of a million chunks, we'd be invincible. All right, so that's one, two. No, not percentile dice. Ah, oh, God. All right, I'm just going to roll a normal 10-sided die. No, actually, that is. It's 10, 20, good. Okay, so that's fine. It's not percentile. For some reason, it's doing it on there. Okay, so that is 13 on 2. 60 is 73. And that is 80 points. That is way negative. He is... Negative 92 points of damage. Or no, not negative 92. <laughs> negative 52. So 92 points of damage on that creature. Oops. His whole family died. Yes. We should, uh, we should keep these automatons with us the rest of this campaign. Oh, yeah. They like you. They're under your power right now. They're your power to do whatever your little hearts desire with, so long as it isn't against Oinsy. All right, it's your turn, Sil, now that this one's deader than a doornail and floating in pieces next to you. Of course, the flanker's gone, but I don't think you're going to need the flanker. Even its two incarnations are already dead. <laughs> yeah, exactly, before being born. Josh, you might be muted. Huh? It's your turn. Oh, okay. Wake up. Oh, I can hear her just fine. I don't right, have it turned up that high. Well, when I can put my ear to yours and hear it. No, I can hear her fine. So it looks like the one in front of me was uh, destroyed. Let's so see. let's see what she's seeing. I'll uh, plink in a key point. Hey, and, Janet, uh, say something. Flurry the one in front of me. Hello. I hear her just fine. All right, be my guest. Ooh, that hits. That hits. Start All right, right we'll do. That hits. All right. And those two don't. So you got a couple hits. Okay. So you're feeling confident now, probably, that uh, these clockworks are around you. Dang. So that's 12, 22, 31 points of damage. Yay, yay, yay! The fish stick is not loving life. He's feeling kind of sticky. Fish sticky. All right, Shara. For now, you can see there is some sanity in the eyes of Aurora. But it's you have a feeling it's going to be very short-lived unless you go knock her into next week. Not killing her, just putting her down with subdual damage. You know what uh, we could do that might be a little uh, less uh, damaging to uh, her and also let you pound on this ghost thing is I could put her to sleep. Yeah, that would be that would be real good. So you have to roll really terrible on this one. So Sean, you gotta roll really horrible. <laughs> what kind of save is it? Oh, it'll be coming up here. The scum has to go first. All right. Um, but Shara's got her turn. Sorry, Shara's got her turn. Yeah, Sh Now, so, Shara... What are you saying, Rick? I mean... It, what I'm saying is, it is, it's Shara's turn. Right. And I was saying that she could either do one of two things. She sees... Aurora come back to being the friend she's known. Rick, right. Keisha says that uh, Fantasy Grounds is dropping on her again. 
All right, give me a second here. Let me save this and we'll come back to it. We'll try this again here. Have to close everything down for right now and we will reboot. Let's just do a save. Make sure I don't lose anything. Uh, hey, Max, is that the sleep spell, just so I know? Yeah, I have just a standard sleep spell. But I'm okay. thinking if I can put you to sleep, that's better than having Shara beat the hell out of it. Yes, yes. Well, not Shara, but it'll be Aurora. Aurora's the one that had the murderous intent in her eyes. No, and but Shara's the one who's going to beat the shit out of Aurora, is what I'm saying. I, I, yeah. Our options are Shara takes... Aurora down, or I just put her to sleep. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking putting her to sleep is a better option if it's okay. if it's a viable. One. If there, if if it's like I'm just gonna waste a sleep spell. Yeah. That then I don't know. But. Well, it shouldn't be because I'm only at four hit dice, yeah. and you would assume that while she would get a will save. If she yep. was trying to counter it, because she's you would. in her right mind and understands that she was probably mind controlled for a moment, thanks to Mark Hale, yeah, she that's, broke that's that. What I'm she, she would she accept it. I don't think she would. Step. Yeah, I don't think she would attempt the save. I think she would be okay with being put to sleep at that point. Yeah, yeah, I would. I would say that's normally you're trying to resist such spells, and that's why you get the will save. But if you're willingly willing to go night night. A sleep spell can be done that way, and you can forfeit your safe. And um, then I, I uh, actually, Shara. actually, uh, uh, Max, it won't work. He's considered what? an undead creature. She's considered undead at this point. Oh, well, no, okay. she's considered an undead so, creature, right. so it oh, can't be, you can't target an undead. So creature. mine. Then, then we'll have to have Shara knock you out and old, old. Dead boy, he's gonna get a faithful of magic missile. <laughs> so you're considered an undead. What are you immune to? Whatever undead have resistance to, I haven't. I have res no. Well, no, I take that back. Uh, hold on, let me look. Yes, at but, but yeah. you're right. Sleep, a sleep spell would not work on an undead. Well, no, but, but if he's resistant, is he considered undead? Well, here, here's what I'm here's what I'm trying to throw in there. The effect that's going on to him right now is a control deal against Will. So, my question again begs to ask, what is, he, yeah. what is she immune to? Because if you're immune to certain things... Hold on, the what, thi what a Dampier not, is, a humanoid with a Dampier subtype. Yes, but yeah, sometimes... She's not immune to sleep, but sleep does, it says, sleep does not target unconscious creatures, constructs, or undead creatures. Right. So therefore, it can't even target her. Mm -hmm. What would a damn But, she's, but, she, but my she point is, is that undead. she's not undead. She's a living, she's a living vampire. Or not a living vampire, but a living creature that is, is hybrid she's, with them. She's basically she's basically a plain touch, but with undead instead of some outsider. Yeah, let's look at this real quick and see. We'll do so it. because I'm looking at the Dampier racial traits or something like that, and usually when a creature when you when a creature is considered undead, it has the actual undead type. Yeah, and she's not undead or, in that or, manner. No. Or, or or something in her ability that says that she's treated like an undead. Okay, no, but to. but she does get the like you said you do. You get the plus two bonus versus mind affecting or disease. You're more resistant, but you're not immune to it. So he could put you to sleep, because as a dampier, dampiers still have to sleep. They may oh, not true. Okay. sleep as long, yeah, yeah, yeah. but yes, they would on that one, and and that's fine. Okay, so that that clears that out. If you were full-blooded undead, then yes, you're right. Mind-affecting spells wouldn't go into affecting you. Depending on what kind of undead you are. So. Alright. So, is everybody back up and in? Come on back in. Alright, let's say a better non-damaging uh, immobilizer. Right. Ooh, the entangle spell. That's a good point. And she could choose not to, at least right now, fight it. And as long as you don't have that 
shirt on that gives you freedom of movement, <laughs> you're in good shape. So, do you want to go ahead and entangle her then? Okay, so make your saving throw versus entangle. I would love to once I get in the back end of the I know, it's yeah. going to be. Yeah, I'm back in, but the Temple of Amazement let me see anything right now. Okay. Ah, uh, it's doing a runtime error. Why is it doing a runtime error? It should not be doing a runtime error. All right, let me bring it down again. That freaking well, it's any consolation. My whole system can crash. So I... Yeah, I'm... <laughs> I know. <laughs> it just, it is what it is. All right, so do for me, Sean, a, a roll versus the entangle effect. What's... Um, type into uh, Discord, um, Akisha, what the, um, under the Ruins of Aslant, just the, not the general, but the other one, um, put in there the DC she's got to save against to not be an entangled. Because there's a chance, even though you you don't care and you may give in to it, that you still may not get tangled up in it. But you can do it at a disadvantage. In other words, on a negative to your roll. All right, here we go. Let's see if we can get this back up again. Knock on wood, I've had no issues with errors with this thing. <laughs> and it's been good. It's, it's like it can't run for too terribly long, which is antithetical to D&D. &D. Mm -hmm. They can't get the new one out fast enough. And... I hope they correct most of this garbage. At least just the little mechanic things. I don't care, you know, if it doesn't have every feature under the sun. Just don't lock up. <laughs> Not during a session. So. All right. So, Sean, roll the roll. It'll be a reflex save. A reflex save. And roll it. If you choose to do it at a disadvantage, don't add your bonuses for your reflex save. Just roll a straight roll. Okay. I'm going to find my d20 on my dice app here. Because I have my you're... dice upstairs with me. <laughs> yeah, that way How many rerolls do you have? Because you can use rerolls. None. Fail I'm out. Oh. All right. We're up and running. Knock on wood. <laughs> I don't okay, know. I'm, I'm connecting. Give me just a second. This will be better for me to connect. So make this a lot easier for me to roll. All right, so I will not click on anything until you guys get in the room. Because I think that partially errors it. Okay, so we got Mark, Nell, Sean, Akisha, Max. That's no, six. Or five. Yeah, I'm not really connected. I'm just oh, my God. What's going on? Uh... This is it horrible. It tells you I'm connected when I'm just trying to connect. It's uh, not. Yeah. So I'm going to be real bad here. I am going to 